Hey there, this is Nick from Income Digs, and we are following up with a video that we posted about a week ago regarding tracking your P&L for a flip. Okay, so your profit and loss for a flip within QuickBooks and then transferring that over to your balance sheet. Okay, so if you're a real estate investor who's been flipping properties, you want to be able to understand how to put those financials on your P&L and move them to your balance sheet. We had an initial video on it, part one. I encourage you to watch that one first. We're going to continue on with that example in this video. So definitely watch that one first. And this is all coming out of questions I'm getting from students on YouTube, as well as those in my real estate accounting bootcamp and QBO mini course, all the courses we have available, check them out, incomedigs.com. But we're getting a lot of questions about this. So I wanted to take the time to dive deep into this and make sure that we clear the air, show you how I do it and how I'm teaching my students to do it as well. All right, so watch that first video. And then if you have done that, join me back here we're going to continue on with that exact same example we're going to carry this forward and say okay now in the next year after i've tracked my taxes correctly now what do i do to uh, eventually sell the project right finish it and sell it let's get over to quickbooks and check it out all right so as a reminder we're here in our balance sheet let's do this as of uh, 1 1 2018 and oh, i'm sorry 12 31 2018 Okay, and what we should see on our balance sheet is we have all the property in, in our inventory here, and my net income is zeroed out. Okay, looks good. And remember, we have this awesome benefit of on the projects portal, I still have my full PL. I haven't lost that at all. So 264 Union, I have that entire $330,400 shows up here, still looks great, but it doesn't impact my balance sheet. I've made that transfer over to inventory. All right, so let's get into, let me see that again. Okay, now one ad additional adjustment I made since recording that first video. In that first video, you're, we had a journal entry for each month, October, November, December, which is a great way to do it if you wanna kind of clear out your books every single month. You don't have to though. You can wait until the end of the year and just do one transaction. So what I've done is I've made that just one single transaction. I took the entire P&L, the entire project P&L, and did a reversal where I moved everything from my cost of goods sold to my balance sheet. Okay, so that's what I did there. And so what's great about this, what you can do now with this transaction, is... Um, we can reverse it for the next year. So we have to think about in the next year, do we want my balance sheet to still hold this inventory or do we want to bring everything back to the P&L? That's a decision you need to make as a business owner, as a, as a stakeholder. If you're a bookkeeper, you need to have that discussion with your client. Do you want to see the P&L show big time negative before you sell the property? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, if you want it to stay on the balance sheet, then there's nothing, there's no action to do. But if you want to move it, you know, saying like as of 1 1 2019, I want it to now show up in my PL. Here's exactly what you do you can make this a you can make use of the reverse here. So, what you can do is you know, you have your journal entry number, and maybe you say a 2023 year end, okay, is, is that journal entry number. Save that. And now QuickBooks has this really awesome feature. When I click reverse, it will create a second journal entry and it'll flip everything from debits and credits. Okay, watch this. Let me click that button. Okay, it, it created a new transaction. Now it's not saved yet. I still have to save it, but it moved everything to debits that wasn't credits, moved everything to credits that wasn't debits. It also added R on the end there. And you could actually type it out if you wanted to reverse. And it also made, made it the exact right date, 1 1 2019. So if I were to save and close this, and now looking at my balance sheet, if I, you know, 12 31 2018, not impacted at all. So I can file my taxes, 2018 is all good. When I fast forward to 1 1 2019, it zeroes out my flips in progress and it brings it all back to the net income. Okay. So for those of you who want it all on your PL, like for the life of the, the property, other than tax day, other than tax prep, this is exactly what you would do. You'd zero it out. Okay. Now, personally, I like to keep it as flips in progress. And I'm gonna, so I'm gonna delete that and I'm gonna keep tracking as flips in progress and then we're gonna sell it and then we're gonna go do it the other way as if we didn't, okay? So because the sale is a little bit more complicated if you have assets on your uh, balance sheet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete that reversal for now to show you how we would finish the project and sell it if we had balance sheet balances and then we'll bring this back, okay? So let's just continue working on the property, okay? So that means that as of 1-1-2019, I, I have it all in here. 
Okay, now I, I have $10,000 left in my escrow account. What's important to understand is that the escrow account may or may not, almost always doesn't, 100% equal what we spend on the property, right? We get a loan and we get a construction amount that we think might be what we spend, but we're typically spending more or less than the construction escrow. So what I wanna do is I wanna track just a couple more rehab expenses. And I'm not gonna take this extra escrow, okay? Let's just say that for whatever reason, we didn't take that draw. And I wanna show you, I'm doing that because I wanna show you how to deal with it when you sell. All right, so let's do a couple more expenses. And, and so we're here in, in January 2019, right? Let's say that I, you know, spent some money in February and uh, we're closing this thing out. So maybe I have finished electric. Final electric, okay. 5,500, 264 union flip, 264 union as the class. Let me save that. Let's copy it. Let's do another one. As of, let's go instead of 2 1, let's go 220. Let's say we got final plumbing. $10,500. We save that. Uh, let's say that we made another uh, interest payment. All right, so I can copy this as well. Now, interest, I'm going to use category up here. So let's say that I did debt service. 400 bucks. I know that in the previous example, I did some principal and interest. Let's just say we're just doing some interest just to kind of keep it clean here. We'll save and close. All right, so what's happening is that should be populating to my net income. So I'm going to open this up to be 12 31 2019. And my net income has gone down by 16,000, right? Because I haven't done that journal entry yet. So what I can do, let's say that I sell this thing in March, okay? So if I'm moving forward in, in February, what I'd probably do is I'd take that journal entry that I made last year, okay? And I would copy it, okay? So maybe I'm listing this thing for sale and I don't want to be staring at a gigantic negative in my balance sheet the whole time or in my net income the whole time. I want it showing up in my balance sheet. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to say, hey, as of the end of February 2019, 2-28-2019, I'm, I had another 16,000 in rehab expenses. So I'm zeroing out all of these, Let's say 16,000 here. And again, what we're able to do by copying is I don't have to spend all the time creating all these different lines and um, logging all the, the names as well. Okay, so another 16,000. And I had that debt service too, didn't I? Actually, yes, I had the debt service of, what was it, $400, I think. I'll check that in a second. So that actually is probably what happened. I'm gonna have to check these numbers and probably edit them. So let me just look here. This is probably gonna throw this off a little bit. Let's go to my summary report. Yeah, probably took an extra 400 bucks. Okay, probably because I didn't track to class on the other one. Let's just check. So what I'm doing, I, I probably made a little bit of an error. I'm just kind of checking this. 346 and um, there's my debt service, 6400. Yeah, so it looks like I probably just didn't track that last transaction appropriately. Let's go to my audit log. I didn't, uh, yeah, there it is, okay. Ah, I put it right to my balance sheet. I should not have done that, so that was wrong. Okay, so it should have been my other expense. There it is, okay. And now that should be accurate. So now if I go to that, that same balance sheet P&L situation, let's go balance sheet 2018, let's fast forward that then uh, to like the end of February 2019. 81,000 rehab and I've zeroed out my net income. So it looks perfect. And so now I'm kind of sitting on this thing ready to sell it. And that's typically what I'd see, you know, uh, you might want to keep it all in the P and L and, and I'm going to show you that after, but 
typically you're going to move things into your inventory while you're waiting to sell them. And so now I have all this stuff that I, I'm going to sell. So when I sell this property, and I'm going to do that pretty much right now, we have to zero this out. And so that's what makes this a little bit more complicated than if you were to just keep everything on the P&L. So for those of you who just keep it on the P&L, your life's a little bit easier. Okay, I will show that second. First, I'm going to show you how to sell it if this is what it looks like. You have items on your balance sheet. So if we have items on our balance sheet, what we need to do is take a snapshot of this. And when we sell the property, we need to clear all this out. Okay, so I'm going to take a snapshot of it. Construction escrow has got to go to zero. All of this stuff, the 346-800 has to go to zero. The 299-900 has to go to zero as well. So I'm going to take this snapshot right here, throw it on my other screen so that I can reference it. Okay, we're going to do a sale of property. Okay, so just like when we purchase, we're going to definitely do a journal entry when we sell the property. Let's say we sold 315 2019. Okay, so because we have that inventory, we need to zero that out. So we're going to do all that flips in progress stuff. So the buying costs, the purchase price, I'm going out of order, I know. Uh, sub account there. So our first goal is to zero these all out. Basically, the idea is that when we're done selling this thing, we don't own it anymore. So I have to have zeros on my balance sheet. Okay, so we're going to credit those to get them to zero the exact amount that they showed up in our balance sheet. So my buying cost were 7,500. My uh, purchase price, 250,000. Holding costs was 1,500. My rehab cost was 81,000. And my debt service was a total of 6,800. Okay. I'm just going to do customer here, not project, because it's not going to show up on the project anyways. Cool thing too about these sales, like you create them once, you can copy them. It is annoying to record the class and you can't copy it down. But again, you're not doing these, you know, and we, we're training our bookkeepers to do this. We're not doing this every single day. All right. Now, let's say I sold this for, uh, let's say $500,000. Okay. If I were to do that, I need to put some revenue in here. Okay. So I'm going to do something like this. Sale of product income. Uh, now, let's do flip sales price. Flip selling price, okay? So if I sold it for $500,000, I'm gonna put in here 500,000 minus 346,800. Okay, 153,200. Okay, so that's what I would do. Now, if I'm tracking this way though, I want this to show up properly in my projects. So I actually want that 500,000 to be there for the project, okay? I'm just doing this to kind of understand what the number is gonna be. So I would want 500,000 right here. And that would go toward my project, 264 Union Flip. But what we do with it is we back out from our balance sheet the difference. Okay. So we're going to take that 500,000 minus the 153. Okay, basically what we're doing here is we're going to make sure we get credit for it on the project, but we're not actually gaining the whole credit because we're, we're more zeroing out our balance sheet than anything. Okay, so we need to kind of do a little bit of both there. I need to, this kind of takes care of this right here, right? And then this gives me my selling price. Now we could do it another way. I could, I could track all of this stuff. I could track all of this stuff like I did, like a reversing journal entry, but that would take a little bit longer to do, okay? And then we have all the other stuff. So we have selling costs associated with it, right? So um, let's say that 500,000 times 6% in real estate commission, that goes to our flip. Okay, let's say that I had some other selling costs, just like title insurance and transfer tax, things like that. Let's say that I had like 10,500. Okay, now we gotta deal with our loan too, right? So 
We know that we have a hard money loan balance of 299,900. So that has to go to zero. Absolutely has to go to zero. So we're going to debit that 299,900. However, we also have a construction escrow that needs to go to zero. Okay, so we had $10,000 in construction escrow. That needs to go to zero too. So we're going to credit that because it's an asset. Okay, any balance sheet transaction, notice that I'm not putting in the project, okay? And what else do we got to do? Um, we have to probably pay some debt service. So typically when we, you know, especially if you have an interest only loan, maybe they're withholding the interest expense until later. So if I have that right now, let's say I owe on that 300,000, I owe 8%, something like that. That can go to my project as well. And then the rest is really cash. That's kind of it. I mean, your balance, your your closing statement is going to have a lot more on it. Maybe you owe some utilities. Let's do that. Actually, let's say that we owe some taxes when we, you know, I haven't paid my taxes for whatever reason. Let's say that I owe 10000 there. And then the rest is going to be cash at closing. Okay, so let, let's record that. And that's just going to go into my checking account. And again, you're probably going to have that matching number in your your bank feed that you would match it to it. And then you would attach the closing document. Let's save and close this and see how everything looks. All right, the first thing I wanna look at, if I fast forward this to 3-31-2019, is I should see some zeros, okay? My construction escrow is to zero, my flips in progress are to zero, that makes complete sense. My private money loan is gone, and then there's my net income. That's really the goal you wanna see, okay? That's 78,700. Now let's look at it on the project side. I have my, I got the credit for my total 500,000 minus the 421, 300. I have my 78,700, perfect, right? Now we did this a more complicated way. Remember I had to do that weird thing with the selling price, right? So I'm gonna show you kind of an easier way if you didn't want to um, track everything, if you didn't want to make all those moves. But basically this is showing us how exactly we can clear out that balance sheet. Okay, back to 331, 2019. And you can see it zeroes out. Now let's say that on you know 1 1 2019, I made that reverse journal entry. Okay, so I, I move all this out. If I were to do that, how does that impact my closing? So let's say that I do the exact flip of this, right? So let's say that I move it all back to my PL and I don't do any balance sheet stuff. Okay. So I would do a reverse on this. Okay. Perfect. Save and close. And then the other thing I would do is I wouldn't be tracking that, like that February one that I made. Okay. So that February one would be gone as well. So if I go to February 28th, I made that one other journal entry. I wouldn't have made that one either. So I'm going to delete that. And then I'll show you what that closing then looks like. I wouldn't have made this at all. I'd just say, hey, everything's on my PL. There's no point in doing this. The only reason in this example that I would have done my journal entry would be to prep for the previous year's taxes. And now that I've done that, now on that sale, so now I'm going to fast forward to that sale. I'm going to have to do some fixing on this because it's actually easier. It's simpler. Now when I record that sale, I don't have to zero out all those accounts. There's no point because they're already zero. Right, so I I can simply get rid of all these, and it's just a, like an easier transaction. I don't need to zero these out at all. My selling price can stay exactly how it is. I don't need this one, and that's it. That's it right there. Save and close, and now I have exactly a perfect match balance sheet to project to P and L. Okay, so here's my balance sheet zeros all the way across seventy eight thousand seven hundred, and my project shows the exact same thing. So basically what it comes down to is you need to understand as a business owner how often you want to make those changes, those adjustments, those transfers. Do you need to see everything in your balance sheet so that it looks a little bit more accurate so that we're not skewing what our business looks like? It's really up to you. If you're okay seeing gigantic negatives in the in your flips, then that's that's kind of up to you. Personally, 
I like to move things into my balance sheet so that at any given point, if I'm looking, hey, how's my business doing? I see that all that money I'm investing into flips is actually an asset for me. I'm actually growing my basis of that property and then I sell it and I and my profit is reflected accordingly, okay? But I want you to get comfortable with these journal entries. They're not that difficult, okay? You set them up once, you can copy them, you can reverse them. And knowing how to transfer from the balance sheet to the P&L is really, really important. Remember, we're not skewing anything or like lying about anything. We're basically taking a chunk, we're taking a project. We're saying instead of the P&L, I want it to be on my balance sheet as inventory. Of course, talk about this with your CPA, with whomever is fine your taxes, make sure they're on board with it as well. But generally, this is the same technique that I use within my business. My accountant absolutely loves it. We store everything in the right place. Whenever I sell it, whether that's the next year or even the following year after that, we take the project as a whole and we take that and put it into that tax return. All right. Let me know if you have questions on this. I know this was getting into the weeds. Okay. So if you're able to follow along, I really think you, you you know your stuff. If you're not, that's okay. Just know that this is an advanced kind of technique, okay? So if you need help with this, ask questions in the comments here or check out uh, the courses we have available where we take this and we dive deep into it and we have a community where I am there monitoring it. I'm having Q&A sessions and we're getting through all the questions to make sure that this complex stuff becomes you know, routine for you. That's ideally what we want to do. We want you to be able to invest more and reconcile less. And that's really what we're after with all the courses we have available. So uh, check out everything we have at IncomeDigs.com, QBO Minicamp, Real Estate Accounting Bootcamp, our end-to-end -end signature course, and look out for more videos. We have many more coming out, especially we're here at year end. All right, let me know in the comments what kind of videos you want to see, and I'll see you on the next video.